We got Jillian Robertson back here on the program. Who's going to be taking on Maria Gopova UFC Fight Night, September seventeenth. Jillian, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing great. I uh, just got back from sparring a couple hours ago. Got a nice little shiner today. Um, there's a thunderstorm outside, so my dog's absolutely terrified. So he's not leaving my side at the moment. So no worries. Got a little bit of Robin in the side screen, but oh uh, yeah, we're doing great over here. Yeah, a little dual interview. I don't mind that. By the way, what does your shirt say? That looks pretty cool. What is that? Uh, it's the Super Smash, uh, Smash Bros. It's the two wrestling coaches at my gym, uh, Yoante and Daron. And uh, yeah, they're two brothers who are absolutely badass fighters. Uh, they're both fighting for a combate coming up. Uh, Daron's actually fighting this uh, Friday. Okay. But um, yeah, it, it, uh, they're just the two wrestling coaches at GoChad. Yeah, and apparently they know people how to make good t-shirts. That caught my eye right away. That looks uh, that looks super cool. Um, you were supposed to fight Melissa Gatto on this card. You get a Gopova instead. I know there's some history there with you two training together. Uh, just kind of tell people, like, how long had you trained with her and what was that experience like? Uh, she's actually the third opponent I had this uh, camp. Oh, really? Okay. Originally, I was signed. Um, I can't even remember her name now. It was another Brazilian girl I was signed with. Then the Melissa Gatto, and now this is my third opponent. Uh, all injuries with the past ones and uh yeah Maria and I did train together for probably I want to say probably uh, six months probably at uh ATT it was uh uh it I, I feel like we had a lot of competitive rounds but I'm happy with how they went and I'm confident walking into this match we haven't seen you since uh since March and we're talking about a fight here in September uh, was that by design or were you trying to get a fight in between there uh I guess a little bit more by design. I started working at a new gym at the Goat Shed. So um, I guess getting a little bit more accustomed to the coaches there, uh, needing a little bit of time, especially with, I feel like my fight career hasn't exactly went the way I wanted it to my last couple fights. So I feel like I just needed a little bit of time to get my camp together and exactly uh, get everything how I wanted it to be. Why did you choose that gym of all gyms? Like what made it a fit for you? Uh, the head coach, awesome. I just feel like, he has a different mindset. He, the way he thinks, the way he approaches training, everything about it. He's uh, really taking the sport as MMA and also just like the environment of the gym. Like there's a lot of chaos. They try to make it like sparring days. Like people are cheering. Uh, they've been doing walkouts for me. Like try to make it as realistic as possible. And I feel like that's such a huge part about being able to go out there and perform. So are you not working with Dean Thomas anymore? Because uh, I know he, you were with him for a long time. Uh, yeah, I still am working with Dean Thomas. Uh, we usually work together about two or three nights a week. Um, but he's just so busy right now. I know. He's, <laughs> he's everywhere. He's doing the serious XM stuff now, too, which is great. Exactly. I'm like, he's all over the place, literally in a different state every other week. So um, he just doesn't really have the uh, time to invest into me as a professional fighter. Plus, I have a team uh, around me here that I think I have about five 125-pound boys that are all pros, all legit hard rounds for me so it's just great work there and are you still training with jose sorty torres is he doing his own thing now too oh uh, yeah he's doing his own thing he's back up in chicago now oh i didn't know that okay well there you go i gotta probably be a good idea to catch up with him soon uh it's never fun to talk about a loss but what, what did you take away the most from that fight against uh, jj aldrich that you're bringing into this one um i, I guess a, a lot of it was just like I, I was taking a, i knew i was taking a big risk, risk taking that fight i knew jj was a game opponent and uh, it was a short notice fight for me, two weeks notice. So um, I, I guess just being ready, making sure I had a good camp, uh, making sure I'm always staying ready. I feel like I am, but I just wasn't pushing the pace enough. You know, I wasn't getting enough hard rounds in, which is uh, also what uh, going to this new gym has provided me a lot of. So I feel like I'm really just getting my live rounds and getting creative and uh, getting to be a lot more of me. And I feel like that's really going to show in this next fight. Well, it sounds mean because uh, you got that thunder in the background, which is cool. I don't think I've ever done an interview like this before. So hopefully uh, everyone's safe over there. But um, let's talk about Maria Gopova, 10-3 and three record. You know her pretty well. How are you looking at this fight from a style perspective? Um, I, I think uh, everybody who sees it is a striker versus grappler, kind of. Mm. Um, I uh, Honestly, I would just like to be an MMA fighter as much as I can. So I'm always trying to show all my skills. I want to go, uh, my last couple fights, I feel like have been the first fights where I've just felt hundred percent comfortable on my feet. So I'd really like to show a lot of that, but I feel like, uh, the easy way to victory for me here is going to be on the ground. Now you mentioned being at the new uh, gym and all that. Had you done any cross training, uh, you know, while you had that time off, uh, before the next fight? Cause I know that's something you've done a lot in the past. I know you have the new team, but I'm sure you also uh, wanted to do some training outside of that as well. 
Uh, actually, not really as much. Just moving down. Uh, we're down in Miami now, so it's like I'm moving two hours down south, and I just haven't. Uh, I, I guess uh, I've been getting more accustomed to the gym, and I have so many good training partners there. Uh, everybody there is also just so dedicated to the fight game. You can tell that they want it. They got people living in the gym that are just trying to make it. You know, they they all really want this to happen, and it's like as a team making that a goal. It's just it's really dope to have that kind of environment. Who are you getting to work with as far as bodies in the gym? I know they might not be household names, but I'm sure names we will be hearing about soon in the future. Uh, there's two boys who uh, fight on uh, uh, Titan next weekend, Gus Villa and uh, uh, Adrian Garcia. Uh, uh, Jarrett Betancourt is fighting this weekend for Combate. Uh, Roy Echeverria is actually fighting three days after me on the Contender Series. So it's like they've got a good uh, squad of just pro boys. They're all my size, so it works out perfect. Imagine the weight cut's going well ahead of this fight. You got a bit of notice, it seemed. Uh, yeah, weight cut's never too much of a problem over here. Uh, I, I've been, this last week is when I've really just been like, all right, we need to stop the junk food. We need to stop every, like, no more snacks and things like that. But I'm still walking like 132 when I'm heavy. What are you eating that's like junk food? I'm curious, like in camp, what's your go-to? Uh, I guess it changes a lot. I, I've been really stuck on gummy worms lately. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, and uh, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Uh, I'm going to have both Dean and um, the coach at uh, Goach Head Awesome, as well as one of my main drilling, uh, one of my main drilling partners there, Gloria. So uh, I'm going to have a good squad, and I I'm excited. It's the first time I've ever had three corners, so it's going to be dope. How's this fight playing out on September 17th? What's your prediction? I think everybody knows the way I want the fight to finish, but um, I I I'm going to say Renee naked choke, but I would love to finish it by ground and pound. That's my ideal way. I remember, you have a couple fights left in your contract, right? Or what's the status right now? I believe I had uh, two fights left in my contract. Oh, that's good. Okay, that that's great. And you negotiate with the UFC directly, right? Because I believe you don't have the manager anymore, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, well, that, that uh, cuts out that 10%, which is nice. Um, and then, you know, I imagine, you know, we'll have to see how the fight goes in September, but you probably want to get one more fight in this year or what would sort of, what's sort of your timeline after this? Yeah, ideally, that's the goal. I'd love to get something in maybe like later in the year, December, it'd be nice. And, uh, you know, obviously right now it's thunderstorms, but uh, you're still going to the beach. What's, what's downtime looking like uh, in camp right now? I honestly haven't had any downtime at okay. all. Um, I've been training, uh, I start drilling at 8 a.m., I usually do an hour where uh, it's like recovery. So I just do like band workouts, rolling out, stretching, things like that. Then I do an hour drilling again and then another hour of live work. So I come home for about like two hours in the middle of the day and then I go back to the gym. So it's just been a lot of gym time. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, and then just last thing for me, Amanda Nunes winning the rematch over Pena. What did you think of that performance? I know you used to train with her back in the day. Uh, what, what was what, what was your thoughts on her performance? Um, I don't think any female performance has ever looked that good. Like, I was absolutely mind-blowing. She just put on an absolute clinic and showed that she really is the champ. Showed that those excuses that she was making her first fight were absolutely valid. She was saying that she had, like, a knee injury, she had COVID, and Juliana was just like, no, you're making excuses, you're, you're making excuses, but she showed that it was a completely different fight the second time. Would you say it was inspiring to see that performance? Amanda's probably my biggest inspiration always. Like, there is no one who is as skilled as her, as humble as her. She's one of the nicest people, one of the most down-to-earth uh, people, and... She's an absolute fucking killer. So it, it's an honor to be able to have known her at all. Okay, that's cool. And uh, just a uh, last thing uh, for me as well. Like, do you still keep in touch with her at all? I know you guys don't train together, but you ever like, you know, hit her up in her DMs or say hi or anything? You guys keep in touch? Uh, not too much. This, uh, this last camp, actually, Dean was working with her a little bit. So he was trying to make me, uh, well, trying to get me down there so I could work with her a little bit too. But our schedules just weren't working up. Cool. All right, Jillian, thanks so much for doing this. I know you got to get to practice soon. I just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout outs, I'll give you the last word. Uh, just uh, at Savage underscore UFC on Twitter and Instagram or uh, Rob the Dog 772. You can go ahead and follow Robin. Um, and just shout out to my coach, Dean, and uh, my new gym, Goathead. Follow them on Instagram too. And there's definitely a lot of good content on the gym's page if you want to go ahead and follow that.